Hello, good morning. A few months ago, we started a free CIS digital coalition uh, together with our friends from um, NTAs, uh, in ICT industry organizations from uh, all um, free CIS uh, countries. And uh, today we have uh, one of the uh, first uh, uh, events um, inside this uh, digital coalition. Uh, today we will talk about uh, <coughs> digital potential of the FreeSys uh, initiative and how to find uh, financing um, uh, of uh, investments in this uh, area in our uh, region. Uh, first, we'll start from um, a debate uh, about um, uh, digitalization in FreeSys um, initiative and about uh, investment in this uh, area. And uh, on the next steps, um, we'll have uh, two presentations about uh, um, funds um, when uh, where uh, all startups or companies from our region can find um, uh, money for uh, different uh, investment projects uh, in our region in ICT uh, sector. But first, uh, I would like to uh, invite um, our uh, guests for uh, debate. Uh, please welcome uh, Mr. Paweł Jabłoński, uh, Vice Minister uh, of Foreign Affairs, uh, Republic of Poland. Um, Krzysztof Schubert, President of the Management Board, uh, NCPR Investment Fund, um, and Tlani Potenciari um, for uh, UN IGF um, 2021. Uh, uh, Gabor Matraj, uh, board member at uh, IV as the ICT Association of Hungary and member, uh, board member of Digital Europe. Hello, Gabar. Good afternoon. And, uh, Piotr Kankowski, Chairman of the Management Board, uh, FreeSys Initiative Investment Fund and Managing Director of the Polish State Development uh, Bank. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, thank you, uh, all of you, uh, for your time and um, discussion about FreeSys Initiative uh, and uh, about investment in uh, ICT sector in our uh, region. Uh, of course, uh, we all agree that uh, this initiative um, is um, uh, uh, very important for our uh, our countries, the whole region, and I and I hope that uh, more and more uh, governments uh, in our region um, are uh, are open for this initiative and uh, uh, for economies of this region. Uh, it's clear that um, cooperation uh, inside region is a uh, key for uh, modern. Uh, innovative um, uh, uh, economies of this uh, region and uh, uh, to build op possibilities uh, to cooperate on the global market in, uh, in uh, ICT uh, uh, sector is the future for uh, for all whole uh, global economy, especially for our region, uh, who is um, very rich in uh, young uh, engineers uh, who can uh, for sure uh, create uh, many many new projects in this area. But uh, first, I would like to start uh, from um, a question to um, Mr. Paweł Jabłoński, because, uh, of course, uh, FreeSys Initiative is a uh, uh, very important political uh, project uh, in our uh, region for whole Europe, uh, but not only political. Uh, I hope that uh, for all uh, governments, it's clear that uh, the project on political level, uh, economical level and social level uh, and uh, what is your opinion about uh, uh, the position of this initiative for future? Uh, how deep is understanding uh, in our region? Um, how important uh, this initiative is for future of our region, our economies uh, in our country? Uh, in these three uh, levels, political, economical and, uh, and social. Thank you. Thank you very much. And first of all, thank you for inviting me here. And for organizing this very important place of debate and platform for discussion because indeed it is a very uh, significant step in enhancing our uh, ability to work together on the on the, one of the key pillars of the of the initiative namely digital development digital pressure there are indeed three pillars but uh, that you mentioned the political the social and the economic and the latter the the economic uh, which is the core of the initiative is uh, divided into three pillars in itself, namely digital, transport and energy infrastructure. And I believe that while we speak today about the um, potential investment opportunities for digital growth, we obviously take into account the, 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 the digital pillar, but it has obviously influence on uh, other aspects, the political and the social too. And uh, while the three seasons initiated uh, only five years ago, 
uh, in the beginning as a political project by President Duda and uh, President Duda of Poland and President uh, Kolinda Grabar-Kitarovic of Croatia, it since has grown into a much uh, wider cooperation, to much cooperation on a much wider scale. Twelve member countries that are united in a uh, very similar uh, economic position, political position, geographical position, obviously, as well. Our history, uh, both political and economic, uh, presents us with many challenges that we need to overcome in order to catch up to and diminish the differences in, in uh, economic and social cohesion with the rest of the world. And uh, while we are developing it, uh, we see that it has growing uh, significance, it has growing potential. Also, the recognition of the importance of the initiative has been significantly increasing over these last five years. Let me just say that uh, we, when, when we started back in 2015, 2016, uh, the initiative was mostly seen as a platform of political cooperation between the presidents that would be focused on security, on fostering uh, cooperation in this regard, most of all. And this was even uh, more enhanced by the very strong involvement of the US administration that uh, was uh, underlining how important uh, the security aspect is. And right, rightly so, because it is, it is obvious that if we want to be safe, if we want to be secure here in this part of Europe, we need to work together and all the uh, undertakings that we plan to, to, to introduce that are already being introduced have the security aspect, the security access uh, as well. Because we are stronger economically, stronger socially, the more, the more we are stronger uh, in this, the, the more strong we are in these uh, regards, the more safe we are as well. Uh, but at the same time, we are focusing on economic development uh, also for purely economic reasons. and. Uh, while we see how developed uh, digital market is in Central Europe, in, in many Central European countries that didn't have the opportunity to develop on the free market principles until uh, 1989, uh, when we were really lagging behind the Western European countries, also in digital aspect, digitalization only started in, in our region after after the, the fall of communism. But at the same time, what was a disadvantage, we managed to turn this into a big opportunity because when we started later, we were able to introduce newer, more modern um, solutions to many sectors of the economy. And now, these days, we are leaders many sectors of it in digitalization of, of uh, for example, financial sector, banking sector. We have uh, services on the level that it has not yet been achieved in many countries that are, in general, uh, more developed and more wealthy than, than, than the countries in Central Europe. So this is a big opportunity and we should continue this way. We should continue to support investment and in innovative, innovative projects. I'm very uh, thankful for uh, this opportunity to speak about this today because the more awareness we raise about, about the importance of the necessity of this, about the need to work on this, the more, um, the more successful we can be, the more uh, partners, both uh, governmental and non-governmental from private sector we can attract. Because this is the main goal of the fund. I'm sure that it will be also um, described more widely by Mr. Kankowski later today. How important is the fund to attract private sector to the three seeds? How important is it to, to foster investment on the free market principles in projects that are viable, that are profitable, that are bringing more and more uh, potential investors to the region that are showing them that it's good and it, it's, uh, it's um, profitable to invest here in Central Europe, not in just one or two particular countries, but um, regionally um, in, in, this, in this regional in this regional axis. Uh, so uh, I think while we speak today mostly about the digital aspect, this has also this, uh, as I said, uh, political and security uh, element in it, but also the social, the social awareness, the social, um, the, the greater recognition of the initiative, and this is something which we indeed need to work more on because it's still it is, there are still many challenges ahead of us, and I'm glad that we will be uh, adding another brick to this today on during this during this uh, conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Um, <coughs> Bunski, and I have a, a short question to you. Uh, one more. 
uh, because uh, you um, uh, you uh, spoke that um, the, the digital part of uh, economy is uh, is more and more important. Of course, uh, we speaking, uh, we can't imagine even uh, any part of our economy without the digital um, part of this uh, of of, uh, of uh, activities. These digital um, uh, um, activities are uh, a, ma a part of almost every part of uh, our economy. Uh, but uh, its um, investment uh, funds uh, so uh, are very important to have a financing uh, uh, um, uh, ideas how to build these uh, companies in our region. But of course, it's, um, it's necessary to have uh, some cooperation uh, programs if in ICT sector with uh, global uh, players in this area. And of course, uh, in British in initiative, uh, the United States are a natural uh, partner in this area. So uh, first, I have a question. Uh, what do you think about uh, a point of view on, on uh, this uh, FRISIS initiative in the new administration of uh, USA? Or is there any risk uh, that uh, um, uh, there will be any changes in this, uh, in this um, area? And what do you think about uh, this new, um, new partnership, uh, new possibility of partnership in the FRISIS initiative with Japan? Uh, for ICT sector, for sure, uh, United States and Japan, maybe, and uh, Korea uh, are the natural uh, partner and natural leaders of global market. And what do you think about the future of this cooperation? Uh, is there any possibilities to build uh, uh, stronger uh, uh, bridges between uh, Princess Initiative uh, and Japan and the United States in the uh, digital sector? Obviously, starting with the US, right, uh, the, there were uh, certain questions being raised whether uh, the new administration would uh, change its approach vis a vis the 3C's initiative. But in fact, if it has changed anything, it's only for the better. The more, uh, because in the recent months and weeks, uh, we have uh, noted that there is very big, even, even bigger than before, interest of the US administration in the initiative. We see that in the, in the United States, it is perceived as bipartisan initiative, as an initiative that unites uh, lawmakers and administration on both sides of the aisle. And so uh, we have noted that there was a resolution of the Congress uh, last year, it was, it was in December, that was adopted unanimously in support of the initiative. And so uh, the Americans are uh, keeping, uh, are keeping the promise, even that it was made by the previous administration, to get involved in the initiative to support the fund as well. And they do want to work on this because they see it also. They, I think they're looking at this from two angles. First is obviously security and the uh, uh, significance of the initiative for stability in this part of the world, in this part of, of Europe. Second, it is obviously a business opportunity because as the IMF provides data for, for our needs and investments uh, in the infrastructure, it estimates that we need to spend around 600 billion euros just this decade, just until 2030, to catch up with, uh, the, with, the, with the more developed Western net infrastructure networks. So 600 billion euros means there will be a lot of investment coming in, in these next years. Obviously, this is a business opportunity for Americans as well. And the same goes for Japan, because Japan has been uh, growing, the, uh, has, been, has been more and more interested in cooperation with European countries and other countries in the EU, especially post-Brexit. They have indicated that they are looking to diversify their places of uh, investment, they, uh, the, the countries and companies they, they work together with. Obviously, they are very strongly focused into tech and digital, uh, as we all know how advanced Japan is in the sector, but also in energy and new energy solutions that are uh, needed if we, if we speak about effective and sustainable energy transformation. Japan is also uh, is also undergoing this process and they are very much interested in developing new technologies in this regard with us. We just had a very effective, very uh, substantive, substantive visit of Japanese prime Japanese Foreign Minister, last week in Warsaw, we have been speaking also with our partners in Visegrad Group, Visegrad Four for Czechia, Hungary and Slovakia. And the significance of the Three Seas Initiative as a platform of regional cooperation was one of the top, one of the main topics of, of the debate. So Japan is definitely very interested in being a partner of it. Uh, 
I have a question to Mr. Uh, Schubert. Uh, because uh, you are uh, working on a uh, European level uh, on the digital um, uh, affairs, and I have a question, um, what, what is your opinion about possibility and uh, uh, the role of closer cooperation on digital issues between uh, free seas countries, V4 countries, we have uh, uh, great experiences uh, in this area, on the level European Commission, is there uh, any um, possibility that our voice as a free seas, free seas um, uh, region will be um, much stronger uh, in, in Europe? Maybe we will be a much, much, uh, a much stronger uh, partner in for discussion on the European level. Um, what do you think? Yes, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So first of all, it's a great pleasure for me to be here with you and also to discuss the digital aspects uh, as well as the economical and investment aspects, because I see what was said by the minister that we are now moving a little bit of the perception of having the, the three C's um, as a, seen as a, a political format, political cooperation format. We are moving more into the economic um, uh, cooperation format, which is, uh, which is great to see. Because I think that the format is well established. We it's basically within the economy or business or administration world is is is, is purely and and very clearly recognized. So it's a very well known. But now is a very good moment for the tighter cooperation within the business areas, investment, and certain projects, uh, especially in the in the digital field. So back to your questions on the European Commission. There is plenty of initiatives and plenty of funds actually at the, at the moment. I will just mention a few which are very important and we should um, work together, in my opinion, to, to be able to, to, to apply for the funds maybe in a little bit more effective way. I will just mention Horizon Europe with almost 100 billion euros uh, a found or, or project uh, in, in quite a big area focused on ICT um, research and development, innovation and stuff like this. So plenty of demands. Invest EU as well, a dream, extremely big, um, a big program, 26 billion euros connecting Europe facility, 20 billion euros plus or digital Europe, almost 10 billion euros. So, so there's a plenty of, of money which will be allocated for digital and digital projects. And now is a great moment for three Cs and all the member states of the three Cs to really benefit out of it and, and to really move the economy to completely maybe different level. So as you know, we in, in this area, we are not the leaders in digital transformation, but at the same time, there is a room for us to to really grow and improve and, and really look for the projects at the moment. So this is my perspective as a person who spent 25 years in the ICT, probably 20 years more or less uh, in the business side of the ICT, a little bit in the administration and the education. So I have this, uh, this uh, maybe a little bit unique uh, um, perspective looking at the same subjects for a little bit different angles. And I see that the time is now to really act. So. I, I would just meant maybe focus uh, uh, just just to give the idea of maybe the projects we could uh, uh, work maybe tighter on the European Union in in formats like D nine plus or like minded countries and and stuff like this. So there is a plenty of 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 places we could work much closer, especially that we are in the front of the TTE uh, Council at the beginning of June in Luxembourg, and there will be a couple of very important. Uh, points with from the digital world to be discussed so so there is a format like mentioned and um, like-minded uh, format where we can discuss that before the council and to really have the same understanding and a little bit uh, coordinated perspective to be presented to European Commission so I will mention maybe in my uh, short um, intervention right now three areas which I think are uh, absolutely crucial and should be included uh, in our roadmap of discussions out of few, because there is quite a few important areas from the digital perspective, speaking about digital. So first of all, 5G and, and, and beyond. So this is something which is extremely important and we should be really focused on the, on the projects in this field because it's, it will be connected with other technologies like artificial intelligence, security, different level maybe of security or autonomous transportation which is very close to the new business perspective. So we should be really, uh, really working on that uh, uh, together, maybe 
involving the the players like ITU and work together on the European uh, Commission to, to have it implemented at the same time across three Cs. The second area, which I think is uh, from the technological perspective, is a uh, cloud solutions, so all the cloud initiatives on the European Union. So, so there is a European Cloud Federation, the new uh, program on the European Union, and there is a plenty of room for our countries um, uh, from the three Cs perspective and also the, the the companies or the businesses from the ICT, which can benefit out of that and be really the, the part of the discussion lead so far by um, Germans or, 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 or France. So we can really join the, the, the direction and to be really in the, in, in the discussion. And also I will mention from the new technologies, which, which, which will have, uh, from my perspective, significant uh, uh, importance for the future, I mean, HPC, which is high um, power computing, high performance com computing and quantum computing, which can dramatically change the, the scene of, uh, of the technology from the um, uh, security perspective, uh, data perspective and, and, and the development. So I will start with this maybe three areas which I would like to put on the table from the uh, ICT perspective, but very important to, to think about the development uh, in this field and to really move forward. There are investment funds, mentioned European ones, which are very important, but also local funds. I, I, I mean the funds which are more connected with the venture funds or private equity and, and the funds which are especially important for SMEs in growth and expansion stage, which is which, uh, as you know, in our region, SMEs, they are playing the, the most important role in the economy. So this is really very, very important to, to help them to move to the different level and go outside, maybe the three Cs outside, and then really be, be able to, uh, to win. So, so that's, that's maybe I will stop at that moment. And uh, uh, yeah, so that's, that's my perspective. So it's, it's really great that we will be connecting now the political cooperation and formats with having in mind the economical cooperation for the future. Thank you very much. Uh, Gabor, uh, I have a question to you, uh, because uh, uh, um, during Polish presidency in uh, the four uh, group, <clears throat> we have uh, signed uh, between uh, Poland, uh, Hungary, Slovakia and Czechia uh, a digital declaration in, in Krakow. Uh, what is uh, your opinion about uh, this kind of uh, digital declaration? Uh, maybe we should, uh, we should think about this kind of declaration uh, in precise format, for, for example. Yes. But what is the perspective of, of uh, Hungarian um, uh, companies, Hungarian um, uh, industry uh, on the free initiative and uh, what is the future of this kind of cooperation in our region? Yes, thank you, Michael. Uh, first of all, thank you for the, for the invitation and the opportunity to share with you uh, my view and, and uh, my experience uh, on this subject. First of all, uh, I would like to, to uh, talk about a little bit uh, on on the past, which is which is a very interesting one, since uh, 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 I, as a member of of uh, Digital Europe, you know the umbrella association of the ICT industry, uh, uh, not only from Europe but mainly from Europe, uh, representing you know the large multinational corporates and of course you know the ICT association from the region. We were together, you know, on the board with with, with Michal, with Mr. Michal Karnovnik, and uh, we tried to represent. It was a lucky situation. We tried to represent, you know, the interest uh, somehow the region, the Central Europe, Central European region. Uh, but uh, we uh, uh, very early recognized that it's 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 not only you know a, a, an opportunity or an option to represent the, the region, economic, social, and uh, and uh, of course, technological interest, you know, on, on, at the board of Digital Europe, we came to, to the idea: let's uh, organize some closer cooperation between our countries. First of all, V four countries, and of course, a, a larger, di larger dimension, which is the CE region, as three three Cs uh, cooperation could could describe it in a in a good way, in a good manner. But let's. 
concentrate first on the V4 cooperation because if we if we talk about the V4 cooperation and and talk about it, we, you could you could easily recognize what does it mean, you know, to work together with other countries uh, uh, in a larger scale. Uh, it was mentioned uh, beforehand, Mr. Jablonski, that that uh, this region is a is a special one because uh, there is a Russian influence. There is a real Chinese Chinese influence, of course, you know the German influence, uh, and there are small countries in this region. And to to uh, position these countries' interests, you know, uh, not uh, let's say against these large countries, against this influence of these large countries, uh, but let's say uh, together with them, it's better, you know, to cooperate and uh, and uh, form a larger platform, you know, for the cooperation. If you look at, for example, the V4 countries, Czech Republic, Hungary, Poland, and Slovakia, the population is 40, uh, uh, 64 million. Uh, the overall GDP of these countries is uh, uh, 860 billion euro, and number of all the employees close to 30 million. So it's a real, real uh, uh, larger market. And, and with this larger, uh, let's say, platform, we could uh, cooperate together uh, uh, against the influence uh, of, of, for example, Russia, from China, from USA, from Germany, and to find or 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 uh, status and and place in this cooperation, uh, as 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 it was mentioned, you know, this uh, uh, V4 cooperation as an example, as the most uh, clearly profiled initiative in Central Europe. The backbone of this cooperation uh, consists of mutual contacts at all levels. Uh, from highest political levels uh, to the uh, cooperation of uh, of NGOs in the region, and there is a th think tank uh, uh, activity as well, research uh, cooperations, cultural institution cooperation, a number of networks of individuals also are very important in this. Why I say that? Uh, this is this is important because if there is a, a an initiation from from a a uh, top-down approach. It's it's not it's not worse, you know, if there is not a bottom-up approach as well. So therefore, it's very important, you know, to to initiate uh, the the uh, interest, economic, social, and let's say technological interest uh, from 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 the uh, from the uh, downside. It's very important, you know, and uh, this uh, strategic uh, cooperation and joint projects. Uh, are very very uh, strong, you know, in the V4 countries, and we would like to enlarge it for the three C's uh, area as well, particularly in the fields of culture, environment, uh, internal security, cyber security, as it was mentioned, defense, science and education, which are very important uh, uh, areas, transportation, tourism and energy, and and intensifying cooperation in information technology and digitalization, digitization in the region. It's it's a key point for us. And if we talk about this, it's not only, you know, to, to uh, implement uh, uh, new technologies, you know, this is the uh, uh, digital skills uh, uh, development as well, you know. Therefore, the education is very important, education of, of private persons, and education of uh, of small and medium sized enterprises, and as it as it was mentioned uh, before, and uh, therefore we uh, we uh, said that the initiation of the V four prime ministers in Krakow in mid February this year, uh, where where they signed a joint declaration on digital cooperation. Uh, it's, it was a very, very promising and, and very, very progressive uh, uh, step uh, because we felt that that our uh, initiation from the from Dan side uh, achieved, you know, the the uh, the politicians as well and the decision makers as well. And this document, which I, uh, uh, which about I, I will talk about a little bit uh, uh, detail in detail. It's a very good one, you know, it's a very good summary. It's a very pro progressive one, as I mentioned, and this concentrate only the digital issues. But on the other hand, if we concentrate on the digital issues, we uh, at the same time concentrate on the economic issues and social issues as well. Since without social issues and without economic issues, 
the digitalization digitization is is worth nothing you know that's that's uh, that's that's a, uh, it's a it's a statement so the uh, uh, governments we for governments recognize the need uh, to further strengthen the cooperation in the region and in the area of digital affairs by creating a new regional leadership framework which is an open one as uh, i would like to underline it it's it's not only for the v4 countries it's it's the countries for the re uh, uh, from the region and we uh, uh, regard you know the the uh, region uh, as a larger region as we said you know the three seas region from the baltics to the balkan it's very important i think and uh, uh, in order to facilitate sustainable digital transformation of the region by effective use of EU resources, which is a very important one, available under the uh, multi-financial framework uh, 2021 and 2027, and of course the next generation EU funds. Uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, uh, recovery and resilience fund we 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 uh, refer to this this is an important one because this these funds uh, are uh, promoting you know the cross border cooperations and uh, this uh, uh, declaration try to establish the foundation of the cooperation and using the the uh, available funds not only uh, the the so called central funds or european union funds the private equities as well and and spend it in a in an efficient way which means that building a joint cooperation framework in digital affairs working together to sec secure uh, uh, efficient uh, uh, funds as i mentioned eu funds and of course private money as well for the digital transformation uh, raising awareness among businesses which is a very important one especially innovative smes and startups i will talk about a little bit uh, on startups as well and startups and scale ups you know not only startups you know scale up is a very important part as well of the of the development uh, very important, you know, to cooperate together and establishing a sustainable research and development and innovation cooperation. Uh, and uh, the cooperation between science and research centers are uh, very important in the field of uh, digitization. It was mentioned the, the 5G, but it's very important, you know, the the uh, as it was also mentioned, this, uh, uh, the supercomputing, data infrastructure, cooperation, the, the sharing, you know, the data, uh, industry 4.0, cloud and uh, edge networks, uh, quantum computing was also mentioned, and then the artificial intelligence, it's a very important one, robotics, machine learnings, blockchain and the Internet of Things. And I would like to underline again the cybersecurity. And uh, and it's 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 also an important one: smart and digital skills and competencies. And of course, you know the telecommunication. These are the fields you know we can work together. And uh, it's also important to to establish or building knowledge resources, uh, uh, establishing uh, uh, a, a, a mechanism, a platform for, for knowledge sharing. And of course, you know the cooperation of of the of the small and medium sized enterprises is as as was mentioned beforehand, and uh, of course to to form a vital uh, startup ecosystem based on the, for example, on the initiations of startup Hungary and startup Poland. And it's also an important thing, you know, to to uh, establish or or uh, initiate the. Uh, larger cooperation of startups based on this example, as I mentioned in Poland and in Hungary, and build out, you know, the the startup networks in the three seas countries, which is also an important issue, uh, and uh, also important issue, you know, the the concentrate on the legislation. We work together, you know, Michael, on the on the. Uh, 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 digital uh, market act digital service act these are very important you know to form the framework of this cooperation and and in, uh, uh, represent you know the interest of of our region because because sometimes not sometimes many times 
I recognized personally the interest of the Western European countries and the Central European countries are different, mainly different. Uh, it just because of the of the development level, economic and social de development level. But as it was mentioned, we have a good opportunity uh, uh, to this uh, uh, to to uh, be quite active in informing the regulation as well together. Because if you look at Hungary and, and Poland and Czech Republic and, and Slovakia, Lithuania, uh, 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 Latvia, uh, Estonia, Croatia, Slovenia, if we form together a, a, a platform and we can raise our voice, you know, in the European Union uh, in, during the, the legislation process, uh, it's, 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 it's a, it's, it's a uh, larger power, you know, for us, you know, to form in, in this way. And of course, there are global challenges as well. And uh, if we uh, if we fight against these global challenges together, for example, it's it's a good example: the pandemic, the natural disasters, uh, and and uh, and the uh, uh, climate issues. You know, it's 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 as we are a region. You know, our climate issues are different than the climate issues, for example of of uh, of france or 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 uh, or uh, let's say uh, netherlands so I, if i can uh, if i can um, uh, stop you for a few minutes because um, uh, you are starting uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, very important uh, projects and areas uh, where um, uh, initiative must be active and uh, we have uh, find some money for investments in this area but first i i, I have uh, two short questions um, uh, in more political way to mr schubert and mr Jabłoński, uh, maybe uh, so first um, mr Schubert, uh, we talked about um, the declaration of the four uh, countries. What do you think? Is it possible maybe to create, uh, maybe uh, in your opinion it's, it's necessary, to create the same um, uh, declaration but for three CIS countries as a roadmap uh, uh, for digital project in, uh, in this three CIS initiative? Yes, thank you for the question. Yes, in my opinion, for sure. Yes, because it's uh, most of the areas which were mentioned in the in the declaration, by the way, uh, with a very positive response from the market. So to the digital declaration, our prime minister signed in the Krakow middle of February was uh, very positively. Um, uh, we, we had a very positive response from the from the market on that. So so be, because it's, it's pretty concrete. So so we have a certain areas which we would like to address as well as uh, this uh, new coordination platform and uh, i can uh, i can tell you that there will be follow up on that very soon so so it will be really really in place and we have the the idea maybe how to present it on the v4 level and later on maybe to um, to also do the same job and and, and discuss the same on the thesis uh, level with the countries because in 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 general within this uh, uh, format we do have the same goals in in digital and we are more or less on the same level they are differences like like uh, estonia being um, recognized as the most digitalized country but at, at the same time they are very small and they need more market to to expand especially if we are uh, talking about startups scale ups and the next stages of 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 investment so so they are a lot of areas which are very connected and i think that that that's a, that's a good idea, and and actually we are we are doing that. So we are discussing that in the formats. I would just mention the the like-minded initiative. It was it is quite old initiative on the European level, informal, and uh, basically sixteen to eighteen countries. They are the member of like-minded discussions. In many cases, countries from the like-minded they are the they are taking the part in the discussion before different steps we are doing at the European. A commission level which is uh, which is great to see and i think this uh, is really bring the, the 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 benefits to all of us thank you very much uh, before we start uh, talking about money because without money we can't uh, uh, build um, a new modern uh, economy a short question to mr Jabłoński. Uh, what do you think what is the possibilities or perspective of uh, building some cooperation uh, partnership maybe between the um, initiative and, for example, Ukraine, Belarus, uh, or maybe uh, different uh, countries on our uh, eastern um, border. Uh, is there any 
ideas for building this cooperation, or maybe, uh, in your opinion, uh, the priority is building a partnership with, uh, for example, Germany. Uh, what is the point of view of uh, Freeze's initiative, in your opinion? Well, the main priority is uh, building partnership among, between the countries that are members of the initiative, because this is the main principle of it, that we need to work together stronger, better, uh, better to, um, use the opportunities that we have uh, resulting from, uh, gen from our general geographic proximity, cultural proximity and, and, and historical proximity as well. Uh, so this is the main uh, challenge that is still ahead of us because we, I, we, we correctly identified the issue back in 2015 and 2016 and the issue still persists. We still need to work much stronger together to build the networks of infrastructure between the member countries. Uh, but obviously we also think about the future and the, the path for development of the initiative is to integrate not just the 12 member countries that are that happen to be both members of the three seas initiative and also of the european union that is the current framework that is also uh, that also um, is all the result of a notion that it is better it's easier to work on joint infrastructure projects when we are in the same legal framework and we obviously are using the fact that uh, under the under the EU legal regime, uh, most of the regulations are very similar in, in many of our countries. Uh, then obviously we see the process of enlargement of the European Union to the east and to the south, the Balkans. I think this is the, the, the very important area of the continent, which is which uh, shares many of uh, the features of the countries of the three seas. We were, uh, we were in the three seas. We were lucky enough, or it wasn't luck. It was, it was a result of, of great work that was that was undertaken in previous decades. But we are uh, lucky and happy enough now to be members of the EU. Some of the countries in the Balkans still are not, but the process is ongoing. And I believe that we should also remain open in the three seas initiative to be. Uh, ready to uh, uh, welcome some partners from these regions, from 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 the Western Balkans, also from the Easter partnership that is uh, that is that is Ukraine, that is Moldova, that are the countries in the Caucasus region like, like Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, because in the end it's going to be uh, there are also going to be potential uh, benefits if we work together in infrastructure, especially digital. So I think. Uh, no one excludes it. Uh, we 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 obviously do not uh, we do not, not exclude stronger cooperation with uh, our partners to the west. Uh, perhaps not in the same capacity because obviously Germany uh, have different uh, level of infrastructural development, uh, so they do not share the same features. As, as we do in, in, in Central Europe. But obviously we welcome any support and we are glad to have Germany as an observer, as a country that is involved from almost from, from almost the beginning of the initiative that has been very supportive, as is the European Union. And I believe that the more uh, we talk about, the more we are ready to uh, explain that this is initiative that is in fact in synergy with the goals of the EU, not uh, conceived as as, as some uh, project that would be an alternative. It's 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 completely otherwise. It's it's a project that its intention is to uh, create uh, um, create projects between the member states to use the opportunities that we have that have been provided by the European integration. So now we also enhance this integration within the region. And I believe we are looking very optimistic about this, both at the countries that would like to become members as well as the countries that, that would like to become stronger partners and support us also in terms of investment. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Michal, a final sentence may I have? Uh, okay, final yes. sentence. Sure. The, the, there are many, many issues and topics on, on our table, but we have to be focused. So therefore, the terms of regional cooperation uh, uh, has to identify, you know, uh, distinct areas. And these, these three distinct areas we, we talked about earlier, this is the digital education for primary education to adult education, developing the digital and innovation skills of SMEs and SMEs digital transformation, 
and create and develop, as I mentioned, a, a vital regional startup and scale up ecosystem extension, the, the startup Hungary and startup Poland model as a network of startups operations. So this was the, my last sentence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gabor. Not not la last sentence. Uh, please okay, 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 okay. <laughs> But uh, let's start um, uh, talking about money because uh, all these projects without money are impossible uh, to realize. So, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Karnkowski, I have a question to you about Frisis uh, Investment Fund. Uh, what are the main goals of this uh, of this fund, uh, and uh, how much money can you spend uh, for new projects uh, in uh, in our region? Thank you. Um, thank you for having me here, and. Uh, mm, I'm not a specialist in a digital area, but I am a specialist in investments. So I try to explain you how uh, these areas and the part of the Three Cs Initiative Investment Fund is looking at the digital sector, especially the digital infrastructure. Uh, first of all, uh, it was mentioned a couple of times, but it is worth to, 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 to add it one more. Uh, Three Cs Initiative Investment Fund is a commercial dimension of the broader initiative, which is the Three Cs Initiative. The, the, that broader initiative, of course, is aimed at the development of 12 countries that lie located uh, to avoid any doubt between Adriatic, Baltic, and Black Sea. And this is not a joke because when we are talking in this region, what are these Three Cs? Maybe we can understand it, but we are going to American or Japanese investors. You need to explain them what are these. Uh, as it was mentioned, the fund is expected to supplement the public, so the local budgets of the countries that are in the fund, and the EU uh, cohesion funds in the financing the infrastructure in this region and to help connect the countries, especially in on the north-south axis, because as we know the the east-west axis is quite well, well developed. So uh, as it was mentioned, fund is a commercial, this is profit-driven entity, which means that it invests only in projects that may be profitable. Uh, we are focusing on three sectors, which are transportation, energy, and digital infrastructure. And when we started uh, talking about the fund and creating the platform of the fund, we have audit and um, analysis uh, what are the needs and what are the potentials in the, re in the region and it turned out that in three uh, three sectors that i mentioned the lack uh, between this region and the the, the well-developed uh, western parts of the europe are over six billion euro so uh, this is huge number as the fund is uh, aimed at having uh, up to 5 billion euro to be spent. You may say that this is a drop in the ocean, but as it was mentioned, we need to start it from somewhere and we are supplementing the other many. And of course, we hope that we will be the pioneers he here and the other funds like ours uh, will, be, will, will, will be soon here. Uh, so the because we are 12 countries, we speak 12 languages, uh, we need to have one platform. And this one platform is an investment fund based on the Luxembourg law with the investment in the uh, Luxembourgish uh, asset manager, which, which is Fuchs management. And uh, independent entity, which is Amber Infrastructure, which is an uh, investment advisor. As you know, later during this uh, meeting, there will be Joe Phillips from Amber presenting you what, what Amber is doing for the fund. Generally, they are looking uh, uh, for the projects to be, uh, to be spent for the funds. Right now, we have reviewed something like 120 projects, of which almost 40 were digital. Uh, of course, decisions that we are, made, that are making, that are made in the funds are uh based on and it, this is independent investment committee and the fund may has made its first the investments what what will be interesting for you this our second investment was the purchasing the controlling share in an estonian digital company which is green energy this is energy efficient data center uh, from your perspective, I mean to followers and the two participants of this uh, of this uh, uh, of this panel. 
what is especially interesting when you will ask us what I should have in my project that you will be interested in. So these are three characteristics, as Matt was mentioning. First, it must be profitable. So uh, fund must have, an, uh, have uh, earnings on it. Second one, must have impact uh, or more than one country. And this third one is must be so-called shovel ready. So we are not financing the projects on the, in, the concept, in the concept area. And the one, green energy in Estonia, has ticked all of these three. So when you call why data center is profitable, of course it is. It is obvious that the, the, the long-term contracts with the large corporate, this is first, and then this is duplic duplicable and scalable on scalable on the on the on the other countries. When it was mentioned, uh, we mentioned, of course, the this necessity of the private sector to be to be to be in the fund because you know uh, it's a not 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 a surprise that uh, as I mentioned from that 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 report that the overall needs are are, are close to six uh, hundred billion euro but specifically until the twenty thirty uh, the uh, investments only in telecommunication infrastructure it is one hundred thirty billion. An additional 30 billion is needed to be spent for ICT infrastructure and uh, in that, in the, especially in that sector. Uh, so uh, we need more uh, private investors and we are open for private investors. And that now, why we need to have profitable projects? Because private investors are looking for money and to earn money. They're looking for projects to earn the money and they need to be sure that uh, we, we like to call our initiative that is uh, politically inspired however money driven and the, the, the commercially driven and we need to ensure our partners from the, uh, the, the private sector that the decisions here are made on a commercial basis and still there is a return for them. So uh, when to be participants of this conference, I, I, I might uh, with your ideas and, and, and projects, and uh, then we, we maybe we will meet. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and I, have, I, I will have one more question to you, but first uh, we have a question from our friends from Bulgaria. Uh, from Andre and um, maybe uh, uh, Krzysztof uh, Schubert uh, uh, will uh, will answer uh, or we can see uh, this question it would be great to have a few examples of priority projects in the field of digital and energy not only in uh, in Frisis investment fund but in general in the huge uh, river um, uh, of uh, of European uh, funds in the next few years um, uh, Mr. Schubert what is your opinion what is the priority project in this field digital energy and maybe both of them uh, in one uh, one field yes very good questions and both fields are quite tightly connected so I, as i mentioned there's a plenty of project i would just mention that the three which i think that are they are the most important is that telecommunication as a connectivity as a first area i mean the wireless and also normal let's say cabling the, the countries because the access to the internet, to the network is the most important. So all projects within this field, they are extremely important at the moment. Then e-services. So we do have quite a lot of ideas from the commercial perspective or administration on the e-services. Fourth area, they are skills and competences. And the, the third area and the fourth, uh, cybersecurity. So, so they are the four areas which are the most important from the, let's say, helicopter view on the projects we can work together. To go a little bit lower, I think that, um, that the projects uh, and the initiatives I have mentioned uh, in the first part of our discussion, like 5G, HPC, quantum and cloud, they are the most important directions for the future for now, uh, for the 3Cs and also for the, for the Europe. And basically 
all those areas, they are in line with the European directions. They are very closely connected to the business approach as well. So they are not purely, let's say, regulation or just the, the administration or, or, or they are maybe only on the political discussion level. But, but those projects, they are very close to businesses. I think that we should uh, follow, on, follow up on that and, uh, yeah, and, 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 and work together. And also the, the areas which were mentioned by, by, by Mr. Gabor, like DSA, DMA, stuff like this, they are very important, but they are a little bit like creating the framework. So they will be on the agenda, as far as I know, on the next uh, TTE Council in Luxembourg, beginning of June. So there is a, a certain moment to work together to present there the coordinated perspective from the treaties of V4. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a few minutes, so maybe uh, a last turn of uh, questions um, uh, with uh, a with short uh, summary. Uh, Mr. Błoński, first, uh, first, uh, first, the last uh, question to you. Uh, what do you think, what is the future Free Seas Initiative uh, um, in the next uh, few years? What do you think is it possible to build really strong uh, common voice of this, uh, this part of Europe? in uh, European discussion, in global uh, discussion, and uh, um, uh, in your opinion, uh, what is the uh, position of the digital pillar of this uh, initiative uh, in the future, um, uh, with short summary of our discussion? Well, it's definitely, it's definitely going to be more and more important, especially the digital pillar in itself, as it was mentioned today already, that uh, it is uh, intertwined with other pillars very strongly. The idea of smart connectivity that unites uh, digital pillars, the pillar with two other, with the with the energy and transport sector. But also, I think when we when we look at the at the basis of the of the initiative that was as 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 it was mentioned before. Uh, very strongly related to security, and I think the issue that was uh, that was uh, raised on many occasions of of cyber security, of the necessity to be more resilient, to be uh, uh, able to deter uh, threats that are unfortunately, especially in this region of, of the world, we know perfectly how 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 um, how, how dangerous these threats may be. Uh, so I think a platform for cooperation. On aspects such as cybersecurity, are are among uh, the potential steps uh, that we may take soon that that will bring us ahead. I think uh, the need for a stronger cybersecurity resilient, the need for concrete solutions in this regard is growing. I think uh, we in Central Europe know uh, better than any other uh, countries in Europe how important this is, and we should uh, work together to uh, implement these solutions uh, regionally, but also globally. But I think that with a very good basis in technology, with very good basis in digital sector, we are able to uh, work out on joint solutions, on joint platforms of cooperation in cybersecurity, uh, both in the, in the frameworks of EU and NATO, and also in the commercial, more commercially oriented sectors, uh, but uh, very important for for the economy, which also needs to be resilient. So I would point to, to this area as very promising, as something which we will be definitely promoting in Sofia in the summit in this July. This is the, one of the elements that we have uh, that we have presented to our partners while we are discussing the, the contents of, of the Sofia summit. The cybersecurity issue will be one of the most important. Thank you very much. Uh, I fully agree with this cybersecurity uh, issue. I think that uh, this is the most important uh, in global discussion, but, but especially for our uh, region, uh, where, as um, Gabor mentioned, uh, uh, we have uh, um, uh, many um, kind of uh, influence of from uh, Russian side, Chinese side, and. Uh, Western side, so we have to be, uh, be very, care very careful in this area. Uh, uh, Mr. Karnkowski, uh, please, um, uh, um, one last uh, short question and, and ask for a short summary of our discussion. What is the, in your opinion, uh, maybe not opinion, maybe decision, uh, what is the next steps in, um, in fund, uh, in, in uh, free CIS investment fund, uh, in, uh, in developing this, this fund? Uh, what is the the most important uh, for in your perspective uh, to uh, to find the best projects in uh, in, in market 
uh, to uh, to invest um, in Serbia and how to build a knowledge uh, about uh, fund uh, across um, three uh, countries across uh, entrepreneurs uh, from this uh, region. First of all, the the next the, the the biggest one important for us is the to gain to encourage the uh, private investors to step in. Because we are open, as it was mentioned, first to sponsors, which are the countries that are in the free seas, then the uh, super nationals like the you know, EIB, BRD, and then the private investors that we are counting uh, very much on them. Right now, we are in a process of so called fundraising. So, our representative here, Joe Phillips, maybe tell you more about it. They are looking right now for the investors that are ready to to to, to join the fund and agree on the projects that uh, that that we are doing. For the projects themselves, uh, first of all, as as I mentioned, we we reviewed over 120 so far. So absolutely, I agree with Krzysztof. There is a lot of projects. People are talking. There is a lot of money. There is no project. On we saying on opposite. There is a lot of fine projects. There's. Uh, uh, to 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 less money, and still uh, one very often these projects that we rejected were not enough profitable, or were too small or too big for us. So this is important for 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 for, for from the fund perspective, the most important. Thank you very much, <clears throat> Gabor. Uh, last question to you. Uh, in your opinion, what is the next? few years for our um, industry in our region, what will be the, the most important uh, issues for us? If you could mention maximum three of this, uh, this most important um, yeah. uh, targets. Thank you, Michael, for this question. And, and uh, as I mentioned beforehand, uh, during the pre-discussion, I spent eight years in the venture capital and private equity business, and I know exactly what is the real difficulties, you know, to generate a, a healthy pipeline for the investment opportunities or, or let's say, investee, for investee companies. Therefore, you know, uh, as a first step, it's very important, you know, which is in the, in the Croco Declaration as well, building a knowledge resource or resources, which means supporting joint international events, exchanging best practices, uh, and mutual promoting the three C's in initiatives, uh, achievements in the field of digitalization, including the result of the cross-border projects. These are very important. And, uh, and it's also very important, close to that, to establish a, a platform, a real physical platform or, or digital platform to share the, or, uh, or knowledge's experiences and I would like to pay your attention to the studies and surveys. These are very important because uh, the, the, the motto is here, uh, measure twice and cut once, you know. And therefore, you know, if you, if you know about the economic, social and technological levels, you know about the, the SME, uh, background uh, of, a, of a given country, it's very important to know what is the circumstances, what is the environment, and this is the real framework, you know, on the, on the in, of the individual, co individual corporations. And I would encourage, you know, these uh, uh, this, uh, cross-border projects and, uh, and uh, permanent uh, uh, cooperation between the countries on bilateral basis and multilateral basis as well. So these are the, the, the most important one from my side. Uh, of course, concentrating on, on or be focused on the three areas which was mentioned, education, digital skills and competencies, uh, digital transition of SMEs, uh, concentrating of uh, industry 4.0 uh, opportunities. And the third one is uh, the the vital uh, uh, environment of the startups and scale-ups in the region. Thank you very much, Gabor. Um, <clears throat> Christoph uh, Schubert, uh, last uh, last sentence in in, in summary uh, of this debate uh, before uh, your your presentation about your fund. Uh, so, uh, 
what do you think about possibilities of have uh, to build a common voice of this our our region in Europe? Is it possible to uh, to speak uh, one voice uh, in this digital um, area, or maybe uh, we should uh, we should rather try to build um, a, a common uh, uh, economical interest, but not only uh, not, but not uh, in a, a European um, Commission. Yeah, I think that there is to, to be very short. So 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 there is always. Uh, good to speak and discuss and try to coordinate the perspective so this is the very short answer and and we see that at the moment so we are discussing that with our partners across three seas before different actions to be taken at the european level so that's the answer but but also to when having the voice i would like also to to turn your attention to to the fact that um, that this year the poland will be the at the center of the global debate about the future of digital space and we will be hosting the united nations internet governance forum in, in, in the end of the year from the 6th to 10th december in katowice so at, the, at that time i would like to ask you to, to book a date in your busy schedules and calendars and and hopefully we will meet there uh, physically to discuss the the digital aspects in the very wide um, perspective about talking about the the technology, regulations, uh, politics, administration, services, and investments as well. Because with my background, I have a pleasure to be of, of leading the team which organized this event. So I would like to, to make sure that the business aspect investments will be also the part of the global discussions on the future of the digital space. So please feel free to be invited and then uh, uh, more details they are on our website, igf2021.pl. So please feel feel free to be invited and, and see you there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, for sure, we'll be very active in this discussion. Uh, so I will invite you uh, uh, for our our uh, our final some final event uh, this year. Uh, probably October, we'll meet in Warsaw during uh, the uh, digital summit. Um, uh, please. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, be active on our uh, next event, but for sure on October we'll meet in Warsaw uh, across uh, all uh, all our partners from uh, whole crisis countries uh, during the uh, summit. I hope that uh, without any restrictions of, of pandemic uh, time, but uh, uh, please uh, keep uh, finger crosses that uh, we'll finally yeah, we'll be able to meet in Warsaw uh, live. Uh, I hope that uh, all of you will uh, will join us during this uh, this event. Uh, for now, thank you very much for for this discussion, for our debate. Uh, for sure, we we could discuss talk about this initiative uh, many years, many many hours. Uh, but uh, for the beginning, I think that uh, it's very important to start this discussion uh, across uh, ICT sector in uh, our region. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jabłoński. Thank you, Mr. Schubert. Uh, thank you, Gabor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kankowski. Uh, now uh, we'll have uh, two presentations uh, about funds, about money, because without money we can't uh, do any any interesting projects in our uh, area. So first, uh, the presentation of uh, uh, Mr. Schubert, uh, co-investment opportunities uh, within free seas format for small and medium-sized enterprises in growth and expansion uh, states. Uh, Christoph, the digital floor is yours. Okay, just to make sure that you can see the presentation. Do you have it on the screen? Yeah, you can see the presentation, just to be sure. Okay, okay, yes, now, now I have it on the chat. So I, I, okay, so let me start. So first of all, um, thank you for the invitation. I will try to be very brief because the time is very tight and, and, and tell you in a couple of slides, probably up to 10 minutes about, about the quite new co-investment found. It's, it's, it's a new approach, new found, which hopefully will address a couple of issues we've been discussing uh, before the presentation during the, the panel time, and also addressing the issues which we can see in the, uh, on, on the market uh, within the 3Cs and SMEs. So first of all, uh, NIF, which is an NCBR investment found, is a venture capital instrument of the National Center for Research and Development. So the biggest center responsible 
uh, for creating innovation, financing innovation, creating different problem, pro programs, decided to establish the fund, which is uh, purely, uh, let's say, commercial fund, but, but based on the public money and to be really um, focused on the small and medium-sized enterprises in growth and expansion stage. So we realized that after a couple of years of uh, of supporting um, startups, we are in the in the moment we would like to really uh, help the startups which are growing to go to the next stage. So that was the main message and the, the fundamental uh, keyword in this in this presentation also co investment. So all the funds which are on the market, I mean different bigger let's say VC funds or smaller private equity funds. Or companies which are which are within the investment space, they are potentially our partners, and and that's the that's the main message. The size of the funds amounts to 150, 150 million euro, which is which is the quite a lot of money for for the starting point, and we would like to invest those money up to twenty twenty six, and um, the investment ticket is quite large, which is between. Um, three and 64 millions, which is basically up to 15 million euro. We realize that this is the biggest gap, at least on our market, and we would like to be sure that we will uh, um, actually address this gap and, and provide the money for a little bit bigger companies than, than, than in the past supporting only SMEs. Few words on the key terms and uh, conditions. So the capitalization we said, type of the business co-investment fund. So we are looking really for different type of uh, funds and companies which are in the investment uh, is in, in the investment field to partner with us and to really uh, work together and invest in the nice companies and help them to grow. Uh, investment is an equity investment co-financed by accredited partner. Always we are investing with partners. So we are not competing on the field with uh, uh, existing um, uh, funds, we are extending and helping them to be much more el elastic and, and maybe flexible and to really and to really go uh, and, and, and have a chance to address much more companies that they had a chance in the in the past. Uh, the strategy we are financed financial support of projects resulting from scientific research or development work because of the National Center for Research and Development connections, we are very close to this field. So academic uh, and the founds or SMEs which are going and then being uh, built or, or, or created across the academic discussion and later they are going into the field and they are growing and growing. So this, these are the perfect uh, potential uh, companies uh, for us. Uh, the, the, the portfolio companies, so actually we are looking for any type of companies uh, classified as micro, small and medium sized enterprises. Uh, the basic maybe term is that they are on the market not longer than seven years for, from the first commercial sale. They do have this uh, research and development component. And, and, and we can, uh, from our perspective, invest in all types of the industries uh, as long as they the companies will meet the requirements of the portfolio uh, companies. Co-investment idea, so basically, as I said, we are looking for the partners, uh, our accredited partner, they are providing us with the idea of the project or we can provide uh, the partner with the idea of potential projects. We are working together on the projects and if we are both sure that this is the uh, possible and very good investment from our perspective in, in the best and in the simple scenarios, we are allocating half half the money and investing directly in the portfolio uh, company. The very important for us mentions few times during today's presentation, they are the private investors, private money. So we, we are doing our best to have at least 30% of the total investment in a given round uh, come from the private investors. So, so that's basically the, the rule of the investment. Uh, at the moment, we are in the ongoing recruitment uh, process of accredited funds uh, that, they, that can be the companies uh, from the Poland, of course, and we have uh, quite large numbers of applications at the moment, and also the companies or investment um, funds which are which are active in the in the Europe in the three Cs. So basically, 
all the potential partners from the three Cs, they are as well a very, very much welcome to be our partners and to partner with us and, and, and to work with us and join the co-invest in portfolio companies, not only from Poland, but, uh, but uh, from the region. So that's, that's basically the moment that we are looking now for the partners and also for the potential portfolio companies. So we are doing both at the moment, but in the end, as I said, we will be only investment, we'll be only investing together with uh, accredited uh, partners. Uh, criteria for the funds, uh, investment strategy, extremely important to us, experience and competences um, in the investment process, experience and competences in supervising and managing a portfolio of companies, experience and uh, competences for the f f uh, financing, like exiting investment, financial stability and quality and references. So that the package, more, more details you can find of, on our website in the area of recruitment of accredited partners. Uh, there is a fully translated documentation into English, as well as the term sheets, uh, different applications you can use to, uh, to apply and to, 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 to work with us and, and, and together try to, to build the ecosystem of supporting SMEs in the stage we have, we have mentioned. Uh, there is as well the offer for a small and medium size uh, enterprises, uh, our potential portfolio companies. Also on the website, there is a place where you can enter the projects, the ideas, the, the, the more details on the companies which are interested to, to have investors um, from, from the field of VC, which we can provide together with our um, partner funds. So you can also submit the application and, 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 and we can, uh, you can be sure that we will back to you with more details how you can work with us in the uh, field of, of, of the investment and in the, in the specific side, size of the investment, also having in mind the requirements, uh, which are also detailedly presented on our website. So I don't want to use too much of your time, just a short presentation to, to give you the idea of the new found co-investment found very actively present in Poland with the potential um, uh, also uh, with, with a big potential to be also visible in the three seas and maybe across the Europe or, or later on wider. But now we are concentrating all our efforts on the countries from V4 three seas, of course, Poland. And uh, please be welcome to join our activities and partner with us in the co-investments in the, in the field within this region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Hubert. Uh, I'm sure that after our our second uh, uh, presentation, we will uh, take uh, some questions uh, probably from our uh, um, uh, companies and uh, I will uh, let you know about some questions or, uh, or needs from, uh, from you uh, about some extra information about your fund. Uh, and uh, now, uh, please uh, welcome uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Phillips, uh, head of uh, organization Freezes Fund, Amber Infra Infrastructure from London, I think. Um, and please, for presentation, uh, Freezes Initiative Investment Fund, Accession and Possibilities. Joe, the floor, digital floor um, is yours. Thank you and good afternoon. It's a, a great honor to be able to speak to you um, again. I think I, I was on uh, one of your earlier conferences last year. So I'm going to try and do this quite quickly because I'm very conscious of the time and I think it's always helpful to have time for uh, Q&A. So I will uh, move through this as fast as I can. So the, well, the, the, I'll, I'll definitely ignore the disclaimer. That's probably the least interesting bit of my presentation. So first of all, a very brief overview about the Three Seas Initiative Investment Fund. Um, uh, the, the fund is, has a geographical focus in Central Eastern Europe. Uh, Piotr from BGK has, has, has run through the countries that um, we cover. We cover three sectors, transport, energy, and digital. Um, we have made um, three investments to date, one in each of those sectors. Uh, since we started in February 2020, uh, notwithstanding the pandemic. Uh, we have a strategy which focuses on, um, the easiest way to say it is greenfield, but it doesn't, it doesn't, that doesn't mean that we need to focus purely on, on greenfield construction. We can acquire assets or companies that require future significant capital expenditure uh, to either modernize or grow their asset base. 
Um, we have a target IRR for the fund of 12 15 percent that's on a portfolio basis so depending on the sector and the country and the currency the the uh, returns can be below or above that and we've raised close to 1 billion to date with a target to raise um, uh, three to five billion in the future in total um, amber which is um, uh, the the company I work for is a London fund manager and I'll talk a little bit about us as well so that you understand our role with the three C's initiative investment fund um, I think the most important thing that we're trying to do with the three C's fund is not just to make good investments and make a return for our investors, but to demonstrate the market opportunity within the three C's region. Um, I, I think, I think, and I won't go through this in detail, but, the, but, but, the reality is, is, is a very, very significant. Oh, I've lost you with a population of over 100. It's important in Western, are willing to invest in this region, the opportunity to outperform. Uh, and I think that is one of the messages we, as part of the, the fund, um, are trying to deliver to investors more broadly, which is. Um, come and invest in the three C's fund and, and we, we, we will deliver a po positive return for you. But also, um, we're trying to encourage other private sector investors to invest directly in the region uh, because the need for infrastructure investment is very significant. Um, there are lots of reports. The minimum number that I've seen is 500 billion by 2030. I think that's an underestimate. Um, so the fund alone isn't going to make a difference, but the fund investing and showing other in private sector investors that this is a market that's attractive, I think that's a very important point of, of, of the Three C's Fund. Um, uh, I think I've said, given in, in the interest of time, I'll skip this slide, but there's two points here. We're a 15-year fund, which can be extended to 20 years, so we're a long-term investor, and we have a five-year um, investment period, which we're one year into. Um, as for Amber, um, Amber is um, uh, an international fund manager based, uh, headquartered in London. We are an infrastructure specialist. We Many of the team members have been involved in the sector for uh, decades. I, I first did infrastructure before it was uh, an asset class in the 90s. And I think one of the key things there is that infrastructure as an asset class for private sector investors was pretty well invented in the UK in the 90s. So I think we have the background, the experience, and the knowledge of, of how to invest. Um, we have a good track record. We have um, significant greenfield experience. Um, we focus very much on not just making investments, but the asset management of those investments. So we have a very big asset management team. And we partner with governments uh, in around the world, including in the UK, where we manage a number of structural funds for the UK government, including the National Digital Infrastructure Fund. Um, so I think we have the experience, the knowledge and the expertise. Um, we are uh, uh, un undoubtedly on a learning uh, process within the Three Seas region. In the last year, I thought uh, very briefly take this through, take you through this. We we were appointed in uh, the beginning of 2020, and we made uh, we did a number of things. We've opened offices in Vienna, Prague, and Warsaw, and we're building a team there. And we made three investments. The first one, Cargo Unit, which is a Polish um, locomotive leasing business. The second one, Greenergy which is a greenfield data center business. And the third one, which was um, early 21, which is not yet announced, is a renewables platform. So I think um, we are very pleased with the progress made in the first year and hope that that continues uh, 2021 and beyond. Um, I'll skip over this quite quickly in the interest of time, other than to say um, the blue is the countries we cover. So the Three Cs Fund is looking for investments in those countries. Um, and um, I'm fortunate that we have at the top there here, we have the team that, um, that, that manages the fund um, in the top there. And then we can draw on the broader experience of the team out with the region uh, on particular investments. Uh, one of the key points to, to, to note is the investment committee, which is on the right hand side, is, is independent uh, of the shareholders and of us as the manager. Uh, we appoint two members, but there are uh, three others. So all, all the investment decisions are made by the investment committee on a purely commercial basis. So what are we looking for? 
I think that as the focus of, of this conference is digital, I'll fo- uh, I will focus on, on digital as well. We're looking for digital investments that develop world-class network infrastructure um, uh, that, that underpins the digital future. And that, and that means that we, we are an equity investor in, 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 in the digital sector. The, there are probably focus areas for us. The first is fiber networks. Uh, the second is um, towers and telecoms networks, and the th- including 5G. And the third is data centers. They're probably the key areas of focus for us. And what we're looking to do is to deploy capital to strengthen and build those networks and data centers within the CEE region. So in order to qualify for an equity investment in the digital sector, it has to be it has to be digital infrastructure. We're not a technology investor. We're we're the guys who will who'll provide the capital to build the digital infrastructure that will then support uh, innovation and operation of digital um, um, uh, uh, innovation within the region, and and hopefully help levelize the playing field in terms of the access to digital infrastructure between CEE and Western Europe. So perhaps more interestingly uh, for, for everyone on this call, we, we have a, a, a process of uh, assessing investments. So what we're looking for is we're looking for um, companies, advisors, governments to, to bring ideas, projects to us that will then go through our review process and hopefully ultimately end up with an investment. So to date, as I think Piotr said earlier, we've, we've looked at about 38 digital opportunities and we've made one. And there are several more in the uh, in an earlier stage of review. Uh, so I think a very strong pipeline. Um, I'm going to talk uh, uh, very briefly about the two investments we made, with a focus on 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 green energy, the data center. But I will mention cargo unit. Um, cargo unit was an investment we made in December last year. It is um, Poland's largest locomotive leasing business. Uh, uh, and you may ask, well, is it a greenfield investment for us? And the answer is yes. We we are investing the same amount of money that we invested to acquire this business in upgrading and modernizing the fleet uh, to provide modern locomotives that operate cross-border around the CEE region. And I think we saw this as a great example of how private capital um, can support public capital. So there's a lot of investment in the region from uh, EU and funds and from governments in track and signaling. And I think that's largely grant driven or capital expenditure by those governments. What also needs to happen is you need to have the modern locomotives that run on those on those upgraded systems. Uh, and that's where the private sector through the 3Cs fund can provide capital that is very complementary to the EU structural funds. And I think that's an important point that, you know, historically a lot of... Um, in the recent past, a lot of infrastructure investment has been via um, uh, EU structural funds or financed via EU structural funds. Um, as as the uh, CE markets develop and, uh, and become closer to Western Europe, the amount of EU capital will fall. And I think it's very important that private capital is, is, is available and an option that's open to governments to fund future infrastructure investment. Uh, directly relevant to the discussion today, is our investment in green energy data centers. So we identified uh, with the um, Estonian shareholder in the fund the opportunity to acquire a company that was um, in in the process of building a new data center in Estonia. Um, We we acquired that business in December and we're in in, uh, the process of completing construction of phase one. So this is a high quality data center meeting all the latest standards with a particular focus on energy efficiency, which I think is very important, uh, connectivity, um, and um, uh, a, set, a data center that will provide latest state of the art um, facilities for both small and medium enterprises, uh, hyperscalers, and government. Um, we, we see this as phase one. We would like to build more data centers in the CE region. Uh, we expect Green Energy to complete phase one construction mid mid 2021 and be operational in quarter three this year. And then we'll look to build uh, data centers throughout the region. Um, we think that providing this sort of digital infrastructure is absolutely critical uh, to, the, to the digital sector as a whole in the region. Uh, and a great this is a great example of us acquiring an existing project and then providing capital, not just to complete it, in construction, but also to provide capital for that future expansion. Um, 
So that's um, green energy data centers. Um, I, 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 I will move on and say that what's important to us is um, receiving inquiries from those in the digital sector who want to find equity capital for investment. And um, the contact details are here. And, and I'm sure that the conference organizers can make my uh, details available to anyone who wants to contact us about opportunities. And, and to summarize, we're looking for equity opportunities where we're deploying uh, capital that is there to build, expand, or modernize uh, networks within digital infrastructure. We have a 15-year investment horizon as a minimum. Um, we are um, looking for uh, a return in the teams um, over that period of time. Uh, our minimum investment size is around 50 million, although we will make smaller investments where, where we think the, uh, there is a, a compelling reason to do so. And our maximum equity ticket before co-investment at the moment is around 200 million although that will grow as we increase the capital available in the fund. Um, so that is the end of my presentation, and I hope that um, I have the opportunity to answer any questions from any of the attendees. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, <clears throat> uh, of course, uh, the, the full presentation uh, and both of the presentation will be sent um, to uh, our participants. Uh, so maybe uh, some extra question will be perfect. Uh, but uh, if you uh, if you have any questions to our guests, with Krzysztof and uh, Joe, so feel free. Uh, oh, we have uh, some question. Uh, mm, uh, no, uh, it's not a question, but only opinion. Uh, but maybe if you, if you would like to <laughs> to comment this this statement, so please free, 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 and we are waiting for uh, any question for our uh, oh yeah we have uh, uh, one voice so Rafael Sanet, I S Wireless Company, so feel free. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for the possibility to, to ask a question. Um, I represent IS Wireless, a telecommunications company from, from Poland. To give you uh, some background, we provide 5G networks in the open run model, which soon will be the dominant one in building the, uh, the mobile networks. So in fact, we are the only such a vendor in, in this part uh, of Europe. Um, we also have uh, R&D team working on projects from the uh, from the beyond 5G area, which is also mentioned today. And I wanted to um, ask a few questions. So first, uh, first question is: uh, Can company like like ours apply for the funds from the 3 Cs program, uh, mainly to support the the first rollouts? Uh, so actually building the the network, the telecommunication networks. From the earlier discussions today, uh, we may be a very good fit, uh, but uh, from your uh, presentation, Mr. Philips, I would like to ask, um, because the focus is on digital infrastructure, so is it like the only infrastructure uh, or uh, can the whole project, the first rollouts be, be financed? So that's number one, uh, question number one. Uh, question number two, how long the whole process takes? So from the start, from the uh, from applying to, to get the funding. Um, the next question is about the uh, 3Cs uh, digital highway. So what kind of ideas can fit into this project? And is telecommunication there uh, as well? Mm. And the last one, <laughs> sorry for so many questions. And the last one, uh, so open run equals open ecosystems. So many companies working together to deliver the best and most secure uh, solution. Uh, so although we are at the forefront, we don't want to be alone. So is there any platform to approach similar companies from, uh, from the region? Um, we, of course, do our own items, like the conferences. So we organize, for example, the conference in two weeks uh, on Open Run, um, 5gmadetogether.com. Uh, so please feel invited. But is there any like institu institutional platform where we can connect with those companies and build strong ecosystem of companies working on Open Run and creating you know, uh, our region um, like super in this, uh, in this area? So these are these are my questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that the last question uh, last question would be uh, better for, for Mr. Schubert. Uh, I think that maybe maybe we we should think about some platform uh, from Polish side to, to to build some platform for 
um, for cooperation, building cooperation between companies in our region. Not only open run, but in general, uh, maybe some some kind of platforms for for uh, for companies in in this area and in ICT sector would be a good idea. Uh, but um, the, the the first questions for sure was for Joe. Uh, so uh, maybe first Joe and. Uh, so I'll try. Please, please uh, tell me if I if I go off um, at a tangent and don't answer your question. But I think the first one is, um, you know, accessing funds from three C's itself and how you do that and how long it takes. Well, I think the the first thing is that um, you know, I, what we try and do is make sure that uh, anyone who approaches the fund has the opportunity to 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 make their proposal to us. So I think it's a simple matter of contacting us providing us with the details uh, in a very summarized fashion of what it is you want to use capital for uh, and um, what, what, why you think that's a good commercial opportunity for us. And I think, I think from my perspective, in terms of size, um, you know, 50 million is our minimum ticket, but um, we are obviously very keen to deploy capital in, 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 in 5G and in networks. And therefore, we can look at a transaction that's smaller if it's part of a series of transactions in the future. So I think it doesn't have to be 50 million at once um, in, in digital. It can be smaller amounts that, that over time increase. Um, what is important is that we are an equity investor and therefore we will need to do uh, a, a, a significant degree of due diligence on, on the opportunity, the people behind it, the technical solutions that are proposed and the market uh, and in particular the revenue model, how, how is the investment going to generate um, revenue and ultimately returns for investors? Um, I think I think it's um, it's no different to any other equity process. Uh, I will be very honest on timetable and say that um, from 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 day one, where we first meet someone, to 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 a check being. Uh, well, no, check's a bit of an old-fashioned term, but to, to cash being in your account um, in terms of an equity investment, um, you know, nine months would be a, a fast process. Uh, I have seen deals done in six months, but not often. Uh, and generally, things take between nine months here from the very first contact to, to, to completion. Um, uh, obviously, uh, that requires uh, the, the, the various stages to be to be dealt with, but the most important is the first one, which is checking that what, what you're asking for is something that the fund is in theory capable of doing. It meets the fund criteria in principle, and therefore it's a question of negotiation and diligence thereafter. So the, the initial gating process happens very quickly uh, as a matter of weeks. So that was, uh, I, th I think the second, or the, was, there a, was there a follow on on digital highway? Um, so the, the digital highway is, is part of what are known as the priority projects of the Three Cs initiative. Um, we, we are, as the fund, are trying to work out how we can deploy capital to achieve that objective. And, and one of the things we're particularly interested in is, is filling in gaps in the fibre network, the fibre backbone around the Three Cs region. So we, we, what we're trying to do is identify gaps and work out who is the partner that we can invest with to fill that gap in 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 the network, uh, so I, I don't have any um, uh, immediate answer to that. Other than it's one of the things we are we are trying to do. We've identified gaps. We've identified potential partners. We've yet to make an investment in in fiber. Thank you very much, uh, Joe. I hope that uh, for Rafa was uh, um, uh, all uh, all questions uh, was uh, understood. Uh, but Christoph uh, Schubert, please. Uh, this question of, of Rafa, uh, which I think that could be maybe could be uh, interesting for for your fund, maybe uh, creating some uh, building as a platform for matching uh, um, uh, partners in uh, in uh, free seas region uh, between uh, different countries in uh, from ICT sectors to find some some partners in uh, in new projects would be a good idea for uh, for for your fund, for example. What do you think? Yeah, definitely that might be a good idea. The, the, the question is, what is the business behind that um, activity? That, that's the first question. And the second, always where we are discussing the potential projects, what is the expected size of the investment? So, so yeah, because based on that, we, we, are, we can create different opportunities. We are much smaller size than the three Cs, so we are investing together with partners between 6 to 128 million zloty. 
which is which is the gap at identified for Poland and the Tricis countries. But in the wider perspective, it might be not enough. So so yeah. But but back to the question on five G community and exchange because the question the, the bottom question was to how to exchange the projects and the and the ideas in the five G is basically in the tel telecommunication space. So so there is that the, the number of NGOs like. Uh, uh, like the president Kanovnik is running, so they are which which are focused on the on the five G. So so you have to look at the similar probably NGOs uh, across the uh, territory or coordinated with uh, with the president Kanovnik. There are different groups on the ITU level, which is um, International Telecommunication Union, the biggest telecommunication organization under UN umbrella, and there there is a lot of different groups, uh, formal and informal. Of countries which are discussing exchanging ideas of on the technical side and also on the business side and the same on the european level there is and the number of groups close to let's say to the european commission or close to the ngos which are based in the eu so it depends on the expectation in this field this is more to exchange the ideas like to build the platform or I, yeah like, like to meet other players in the field of 5g and 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 open run for example yes to exchange the so 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 the question will be uh, about the expectations and then back to the financial side about the size time the horizon and stuff like this because our horizon is very similar to trees it's probably like up to 7 years investment and 7 years for 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 for, uh, for being out of the investment so basically we are in the same in the same area on a little bit different levels we are more for SMEs in the growth and expansion stage. Thank you very much. Uh, Rafael, everything is clear? Thank you very much. Yes, everything is clear. Thank you very much. It was very helpful. Great. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for your time, uh, for your presentations. Uh, we'll send your presentations to our participants uh, and to our partners in the whole uh, FRISIS region. Uh, I'm sure that we will have some um, uh, additional questions to you, but we will send you uh, by email and maybe we'll prepare some uh, some Q&A uh, book for our, our partners in, uh, in different countries. Um, but uh, for now, uh, thank you very much for your time, for your uh, presentations, for, uh, for, uh, for debate, for discussion uh, about FRISIS uh, initiative uh, for uh, FRISIS uh, fund and, uh, and um, uh, general funds for uh, digital uh, area in our region. I hope that uh, we will meet one more time um, in, in this, uh, in this um, uh, topic. For sure, we will uh, invite you for our uh, summit on uh, October. Then, for sure, we will talk about uh, money for uh, digital uh, economy. Uh, for sure, this uh, this is one of the most important pillar of modern um, future uh, economies in our region. So, for sure, we have to talk a lot of uh, about this uh, priority for our government, for our businesses, for our consumers. So, thank you very, very thank you very much one more time, and uh, see you uh, next uh, next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much. Thank you.